Hey there! Welcome to the land of Dremel. I'm going to be spending 100 days here in hardcore Minecraft. This map is huge, and I'm going to explore all of it. Oh, and since this map has custom mobs, I'll be playing on a setting that makes them 8 times stronger. This video was a huge challenge and took a lot of work to make, so if you like it, please consider subscribing. It'll put a big smile on my face. Thank you. And if this video gets 1,000 likes, I will make a second part where I spend 200 days here. So yeah, let's get started. I begin in spawn on day negative one, setting the difficulty to the hardest eight player difficulty. I then set the time to zero to begin the challenge. I had a choice of three classes, and I went with Paladin because it gave me extra health. By the way, the class bonus is attached to my boots, just keep that in mind. And I finally spawn into the world, apparently I had been asleep for a thousand years. There were some murals about the various gods of the realm. I found a chest with some bread and wood, and another chest with some emeralds in it. I found that chiseled stone bricks marked where treasure was. I then left the cave and climbed to the surface. Day zero had begun. I did the usual thing of chopping down some trees, and I unalived some sheep for their wool. There was a path leading to the Chamber of Dreams. Inside I found some wheat, made a wood pickaxe, found a sword, and a helmet. I also found Jack the Zombie and stole his pants for some armor. Looting more emeralds, I found a compass that pointed to this cave, I found my first skeleton, killed it, and I left. I went down a path leading to the village of Drabiel. Along the way I unalived another sheep, made a bed, looted some ruins, and tamed a donkey to save on hunger. I found a ruined church explaining the three aspects of the land, Dremel, the god of creation, Malice, god of destruction, and Virtuo, goddess of peace. Then it was night time and I went to bed. On day one I continued down the path and found my first tower. I was introduced to the Terminus, a place that allowed me to teleport to unlocked towers. Inside I had received my first major quest to unlock every single tower. I left the Terminus and continued down the path, looting more chests along the way. I found my first villager by a lake. He was a Fletcher, so let's call him Fletcher. I bought some arrows from Fletcher. I also looted his campsite and stole all his stuff, before buying a bow from him. After more traveling and looting, I entered my first town, New Drabiel. Being a paladin, I chose to remain as honorable as possible to these villagers. So I looted their houses, their church, went grave robbing, destroyed their library, and then went to bed. I started the second day by finding an old compass. I crafted a shield and put one of Drabiel's banners on it. I tamed a horse, and let's call him Wander. I left Drabiel with Wander and began to follow the compass. Along the way I found a camp and got a crossbow. Atop the camp I spotted a structure in the distance and boated over to it. This is where the compass was pointing, a ruined city called Absol. It was infested with pillagers. I stole from some chests before ascending the main tower. I fought two mini-bosses, Ornstein and Smo, and stole their weapons. Atop the tower I found lots of treasure as well as a book for feather falling. I made an iron pickaxe and went to bed. On days 3 and 4, I left Avsal and went down a path leading to my second tower. I then crossed some extremely high bridges and saw some really cool looking cliffs. Continuing south, the land turned tropical with beaches and palm trees. I entered the town of Moda and upgraded my paladin boots, which now gave me two extra hearts. Continuing my journey for honor, I stole from every chest in the city, upgraded my armor, and then fell asleep. I left Moda and followed some signs leading me to Tharzax. I saw a very spooky looking cave, but it was filled with mobs, so I passed it. I found the next tower. It was guarded by necromancers and a witch who I yeeted into the ocean. After collecting the tower, I continued down the path. On day 6, I entered Tharzax city, which looked surprisingly modern. I did the usual stealing, crafted some armor, and ringing bells. Hey, speaking of bells, you see that bell down below? You should ring it. It'll tell you when I upload more videos. On day 7, I saw an island off the coast and noticed that it had a tower on it. I then left and traveled north, entering Fort Namage just as night was falling. Of course, I stole things and then went to bed. The next morning, I found a bow with power 5 and mending. While looting, I found a chiseled stone brick, which meant treasure. It led me down a secret staircase into a giant skull, where I found my first legendary weapon. Osteogenesis. It only did 3 damage, but it had smite 10, which meant it dealt massive damage to undead mobs. After getting my new sword, I left the fort and found the tower for North Tharzax. On day 9, I began down the path to Kasai and Marajul. I found a pillager camp in the savannah and got an enchanted crossbow, as well as my first diamond. I wandered around for a bit and found more pillagers settled on a massive stone wall. Moving into the orange forest of Marajul, I found the town Okek and, you guessed it, began stealing everything I could find. 
I also found a wither rose, which was weird, but I left it behind. With the first 10 days down, I continued my quest, finding the tower for Marajul and finally using the power of osteogenesis. Leaving Marajul, I traveled to the great desert of Kasai, which had these crazy cool looking rock pillars. I found a secret weapon, the immortal slapfish, and got another tower. The terminus told me I had 25% of the towers and told me to go to a research facility. I tamed a new horse and traveled to the facility. Don't get too attached to this horse, I actually lose him the next day. The facility the facility was stuck in time for at least a thousand years, similar to me when I spawned into the world. There were robotic sentries and really cool levitation technology. I learned this place was made by Avsom, an ancient civilization that had ended long ago. It seemed Avsom became so advanced from an energy source from an area called Mount Yavalix. Keep that in mind. The prize of this side quest was a unique pair of elytra. It wouldn't let me use fireworks or trident with it, but it gave me slow falling. Leaving the facility, I looked for my new horse. I never found them, but I did find a tower nearby. I traveled back to the desert and rode into town. By now, you get the point. I steal things in town and I loot chests when I travel, so I'm gonna stop mentioning it to save time. I gave Wander some armor with maximum drip and explored the desert. There was a vault door with some TNT around it, so I blew it up. The vault was also built by Avsom, with the skeleton inside guarding my next legendary. Ultva's bow blade. The next day I followed signs to the town of Ebonrun. There was a book in a house hinting at a volcanic mining island if I followed a specific river into the ocean. And oh boy was the book right. I found 41 free diamonds in the volcano and I immediately crafted better armor. My paladin boots were now chainmail with three extra hearts, but everything from head to my, uh, my ankles I guess, that was all diamond. On the volcano, there was a campsite with another book telling me to travel 1,000 blocks north to the Island of Dusk, which I immediately did. It was a magical mushroom biome with purple grass and trees. The loot there was rich with items for enchanting and potion brewing. I grabbed the tower and noticed in the terminus there was another island east of me. Still exploring, I found a dig site with a legendary shovel and oh boy, could this thing dig fast. Going east, I found the Island of Dawn. While reorganizing my inventory, I threw out my glowstone dust. And since I needed to clear inventory space, I put the immortal slapfish back in its ice. Returning to Ebonrun, I set up an enchanting table and used my island loot to enchant my armor. Remember how I threw out my glowstone dust? Turns out that was the only missing ingredient for my next boot upgrade. With my newly upgraded armor ready, I was about to have my first brush with real danger. I found myself at a super volcano and found a legendary pickaxe that could mine a 3x3 area. Up until now I had been very careful, I was always sleeping at night and I haven't encountered many mobs. But as the sun was setting I realized something. I was stranded on that volcano with no bed. I had to return to safety fast or I might have been overrun with mobs on a volcano. I was not in a good spot. Thankfully, I was saved by my glider. I flew back to my horse and returned to safety. I also went back to the Island of Dusk for some glowstone and upgraded my boots to iron. I realized I had also reached the end of the path. I followed every fork in the road except for the one all the way back in Drabiel, the first town. I traveled by horse since Wander couldn't enter the terminus, and I returned to Drabiel on day 25. I found a house in the village and stole it, I mean, I renovated the house to become my base. Back near Fletcher and his lake, I went down the new path to the Heartwood, an immensely dense forest, so dense that the trees blocked out the sun and mobs spawned everywhere. Following the path, I found a small town. Inside the town was a book with a side quest. There were pillagers hiding out in a castle nearby. But first, I made a stop at a special grave and replaced Wander's saddle with Eddie's. Early the next morning, I found the ruined castle with the pillagers. I sieged the castle for treasure. I found a staircase leading to a massive cave with a pyramid inside. Side. No joke, this cave makes the 1.17 caves look tiny in comparison. It was huge. Atop the pyramid was 1,000 scars, a very slow and very heavy sword, but it dealt 26 damage. Day 29, oh boy. This day was the reason I named the horse Wander, because he wandered super far away, and I mean ridiculously far away. I spent literally the entire day looking for him. It was ridiculous. When I finally found him, he was over 400 blocks away from the castle. It was pretty annoying, to be honest. I don't know how he went so far. On day 30, the path led into a mountain labyrinth. I got lost for a bit, but I found my way out and into an area called the Black Jungle. I ended the day riding into town. I entered a palace and found another legendary sword. Beneath the palace was a deep cavern with a pitch black cave. I had to sprint through it full speed so I wasn't swarmed. There was a compass at the end of the cave. I took it and saved it for later. I got the black jungle tower and now I had 50% of the towers so I had another set of coordinates to travel to. 
I journeyed to the coordinates on foot. I found the tallest tower on the map infested with spiders. Gliding down from that tower, I found my goal. Inside was a legendary dagger that gave me invisibility. And below the building was a vault. Inside there were three unbreakable shields. They each granted an ability, speed, health, and faster attack. There were a lot of books inside, so let me summarize it. Avsam was mining energy for Mount Eophilix. If something bad were to happen, Avsam would set up the Terminus Towers, and Avsamic soldiers would be put in temporal stasis inside of Spawn Mountain and have their memories wiped. And since I had awoken from stasis in Spawn Mountain, it meant that I was a paladin from Avsam. The goal of the map was clear. I had to unlock every tower and enter the mountain and fix whatever had destroyed Avsam. I found another tower and legendary sword in the desert, and I stopped by Drabiel to empty my inventory. I made two banners for the the shields I would use, red is for health, blue is for speed. I went back to that scary cave on the beach, and inside was a weird ocean temple. High tier skeletons and guardians were everywhere. I used osteogenesis to smite the undead, and shot the three elder guardians. Dungeon complete, I found my first mythical weapon of the map, Ascendance. The resource pack wasn't working, don't worry, i fix it later. Legendary weapons were good, but mythicals were better. Each mythic had a unique ability. For Ascendance, when I dropped the sword, it shot out a damaging wave. Day 38. I... I lost footage of Day 38. <laughs> Basically, in the Terminus map, I saw another island south of the Black Jungle, so I sailed over there. This was the island of Saad, and on it were five fragments that I needed, so I had a treasure hunt to do. I got a tower and fought ghosts in a mansion. A paper in the mansion told me there was a fragment in the roof. Oh, also I fixed the resource pack and Ascendance looks like this. I found the third fragment in a building and the fourth one in a shrine. The fifth fragment was a riddle. You can pause to read it if you want, but the answer was a golden apple. I tossed all five fragments into a forge and out came my second mythic. Frenzy's ability gave me extra damage on kill, up to three kills. It was great for fighting a lot of mobs, but pretty bad for 1v1s. Frenzy also gave me a big speed boost, so I turned off dynamic FOV so my screen isn't always zooming in and out when I'm running. I returned to the black jungle with Wander. I found some diamond armor for him in the jungle. I began following the compass I found earlier, and I found the town of Mossfield, where the roofs were made out of hay blocks. Found another legendary, this time a spear with knockback 5. I found a book leading me to Havadchir Crater, the grave site of Havadchir Mirik. At the grave I fought an evoker, and he dropped a totem of undying, the most important item in any hardcore world. I also found Havadchir's great hammer. I spent all of day 48 looking for Wander again. I was getting pretty sick of him wandering off. Found two new towers, one in a forest and one in a canyon. I also lost Wander again, but I had a solution. I made a resource pack that turned his armor a bright, visible yellow yellow so I could find him easier. The first 50 days were behind me. If you're still watching this far, I just want to say thank you. And the days 50 through 100 are going to get very intense very quickly. Anyways, I found another tower and followed the compass into the frozen north. Did some ice parkour to get another tower, and had 75% of the towers. I opened a door in the terminus and found a secret chamber. Inside was a trading system for special items like tridents and wither skulls. There was a button that wouldn't do anything until I had all the towers, and a mysterious yellow spear and some glass. Since I can now trade for wither skulls, I went back to Marijul and grabbed that one wither rose. The compass was pointing to a frozen house. The person who owned the house wrote about a monster that was responsible for erasing Avsom, but that the monster was being controlled by somebody else. I also found nihilist notes telling me to find a sea lantern south of Mount Yavhalix. Everything was pointing towards that mysterious mountain. And then I went to the Terminus map. I had run out of roads, and I didn't know where Yavalix was. I figured that finding every tower would reveal the mountain's location, so I traveled to a red area far southwest. I was in a wasteland called the Carmine. I fought a group of blazes guarding the Carmine Tower. There was only one tower left in the western section, Hellcrags. I was still in the overworld, but Hellcrags was actually a nether biome, so I entered at night because my bed would explode. There were nether mobs and lava everywhere. This place was home to Malus, the god of destruction. I entered the Burnt Palace, fighting very strong skeletons and getting a lot of treasure and my first netherite. I fought a mini-boss and received another mythic, Melvalentia. It was Malice's sword. Its ability was a flame shield that blocked attacks. I finally upgraded my boots to diamond. Now I had 15 hearts and 23 with Melvalentia in my shield. I spotted the Hellcrags tower and made the worst mistake of this entire video. Since this was another biome, ghasts were spawning in absurdly high amounts during the daytime. Oh. 
I was completely overwhelmed. The explosions almost knocked me into lava many times. I had to quickly run into a cave to hide. I gathered blocks and soul sand until night fell, but I got impatient and just made a beeline for the tower. I went back to Mossfield and turned their roofs into food. I realized I had missed a path leading to Highfall. Highfall was once a rich city, but now it was in poverty. I felt really bad for these poor starving villagers, so I only stole some of their food. I learned about a lesser deity named Teflane, the god of fear. The next morning I got the tower for Highfall. I jumped off a massive waterfall. And I was now in Aklaroma, the flower biome. I found Aklaroma's tower, it almost died to a zombie. On day 68, I arrived at the painted city of Dusps. I found another book that I would follow later, and on day 69, I found a mysterious compass and a grave. On day 70, I took a quick detour to get another tower, and on day 71, I followed the book from Dusps to a grave where I found a sword with looting four and another wither skull. I ran into a cave that used to be a mine for Avsom. Inside, I flexed on some sentries with Frenzy, and I got legendary armor. The armor halved my movement and attack speed and my damage, but it gave me knockback resistance and another row of hearts. This armor only worked well with bows, so I didn't wear it very often. I followed the compass to a box with treasure near a gigantic door. I read an achievement, and this was it. I had found Mount Yavhalix. But the door wouldn't open. I remember that one note that I had found, and I found a sea lantern south of the door. The sea lantern opened, and I fell into a maze. It was pitch black, but I drank night vision so you guys can see. There were some enemies that looked similar to my skin, and when I reached the end of the maze, I finally got my prize, Oblivion. It had Sweeping Edge 9, and its ability let me pick up and launch enemies, and I want to remind you that the quest for this weapon started all the way south in the Black Jungle. This was like the longest quest for a single weapon. <laughs> Realizing I was back north, I walked east to where I left Wander, and I accidentally found the tower for Fairsile. I only had two towers left, the Unknown One and Mel's Desolation. Back home, I enchanted Oblivion with Sharpness and maxed out Ultva's Bowblade. I traveled to Mel's Desolation and got what was apparently my final tower. I pressed the black button in the Terminus, and Mythbreaker protocols were activated. The Terminus told me to enter Mount Yavhalix and warned me to proceed with extreme caution. Day 76 was the beginning of the end. For my next 25 days, I will only be fighting powerful enemies. And the first of the powerful enemies was in the center of Mel's Desolation. Up until now, I had only fought many bosses, but now it was time for the first actual boss fight. I prepared all my weapons and entered. My enemy was Skull Disciple Asain, a skeletal horse archer. He shot high damage even to my protection 4 diamond. and Asain dropped my fifth mythic, Calamity. Calamity lacked good damage, but it made up for it with a really good speed boost, and it had the best ability in the game. Still fully prepared to fight, I immediately returned to Mount Yavhalix and opened the door. The inside was colossal, with a stronghold as the only building. There were three switches I needed to find. One was inside the main entrance. The chest loot in the mountain was very, very good. Enchanted books, diamonds, netherite, and a lot of Eyes of Ender. As well as really strong mobs, assassins with invisible daggers, ravagers, and strongest of all, lost Avsomic soldiers. I found the second switch past some sewers. There was a checkpoint in Yavhalix, a library that I turned into my safe spot. I just want to remind you that these mobs are designed for 8 players, and I'm fighting them by myself. I fought the Avsomic commander, and since I was an old Avsom soldier, I think I technically just killed my boss. 
but I had to since he was guarding the final lever. I found a terminus tower, but it was made out of stone instead of quartz and it didn't work. On day 81 I found the last room in Yavhalix, the end portal. But I was two eyes short and I needed to fix my helmet. If you're wondering about my chest plate, I found it in a random chest, and instead of repairing my helmet, I just found a netherite one instead. I also found a netherite ingot for my leggings, and for my boots, I needed dragon's breath and a nether star for the last upgrade. On day 83 I was as prepared as I could be. I had never fought the dragon in hardcore mode before, but there was no turning back. The dragon was Teflain, the god of fear, stolen and corrupted by whoever destroyed Avsam. The scrolling text was different. The god Dremol was talking to a mysterious yellow character. This yellow was the one behind everything. Yellow told me to go to the terminus. On day 84, I used the Yavhalix tower, but there was a security breach in the terminus, and the weapon container was broken. There was shattered glass and a glowstone dust. It told me to travel east of dusts. But first, I stopped back home and made plans for fighting a wither. I still needed to kill one for my boots. I enchanted ascendance with smite, and I spent days 86 through 89 around the map looking for wither roses. I then traded the roses for wither skulls in the terminus. I dug under the end portal to trap the wither and summoned it. But for some reason it had escaped. So with no totem, I fought it head on, shooting it with Ultiva's bow blade and finally killing it with ascendance. And so on day 90, I upgraded my boots to netherite and I spent three days enchanting my gear. So on day 94, I traveled east of Dusps. I found a sunken moon with ruins underneath, and I shot a lot of skeletons while Yellow spoke to me. He gave me another quest, to find a secret area in Yavhalix. On day 95 I was at the secret area, and at the end was another place for me to go, atop the island of Dawn. As I was leaving Yavhalix, Yellow told me that this would be my final challenge, and hinted that I would be fighting multiple enemies. On day 98 I was at the island. There was a gigantic crack in the sky, and I went into it. I was in Yellow's domain, ready to battle. My opponents were Ultva and Havachir. Havachir had a magic shield, so I had to slay Ultva first. After smiting Havachir, Yellow told me to return to Spawn Mountain. On day 99, I opened a secret chamber beneath Spawn and saw a painting of Yellow. He told me his name was Mythoclast, and I was finally presented with Mythbreaker, the most powerful weapon. Its ability was to defy time. I said farewell to Mythoclast. Night fell, and I went back to the Chamber of Dreams, the same cave Dremel slept in. And so, I drifted off to sleep as day 99 turned to day 100. I survived. Thank you all from the bottom of my heart for watching. Be sure to subscribe, I put in so much work in this video. If this video gets 1,000 likes, I will spend another 100 days in the land of Dremel. Thank you again for watching, and I will see you later.